Students of history have undoubtedly heard the story of the famed World War I all-African-American 369th Infantry Regiment of the U.S. Army, the Harlem Hellfighters. But did you know that apart from their heroic feat on the battlefield, its members, specifically the Harlem Hellfighter Regimental Band, left an even bigger impression by introducing the world to jazz music? I am your host, Peter Zablocki, and this is History Shorts. The 369th Infantry Regiment was constituted on June 2, 1913 and organized on June 29, 1916 in New York City. It was a National Guard unit with a significant number of African-American soldiers and was initially commanded by a white officer until the appointment of a renowned African-American musician, Lt. James Reese Europe. The latter also became the unit's bandmaster and would later play a significant role in the regiment's musical and cultural contributions to the world. Due to racial prejudice within the U.S. military in 1918, the regiment was assigned to the French Army, where the French, unlike the Americans, treated them with respect and equality. They were placed under the command of the French 16th Division and received French weapons, helmets, and equipment as the American military refused to equip them. The Harlem Hellfighters would spend more time in combat than any other American unit throughout the Great War. They were positioned in the trenches on the Western Front and engaged in various battles, including a Meuse-Argonne offensive. The nickname Hellfighters was bestowed upon the regiment by the German enemy during their service on the Western Front in France. The Harlem Hellfighters gained this moniker due to their exceptional bravery, resilience, and tenacity in combat. Despite facing discrimination and segregation within the U.S. military, the regiment never lost a foot of ground to the enemy and demonstrated remarkable courage under fire. In fact, numerous members of the Hellfighters received the highest military French medal for bravery. The men of the 369th Infantry Unit, the Harlem Hellfighters, would spend 191 days on the front lines. That is longer than any other unit and thus suffering the highest number of casualties of any American unit, with over 1,500 by 1918. Yet while the military feats are now more celebrated than ever with a renewed interest and credit given to the regiment in recent decades, not much is said about their other gift to the world, jazz. While stationed in France, the Harlem Hellfighters were exposed to the vibrant and lively music scene in Paris, where they soon introduced their own sound. By the time they left, jazz, with its roots in African-American musical traditions, would become a symbol of cultural expression and freedom for not only the soldiers, but citizens alike. James Reese Europe was already a successful band conductor before the war when he was commissioned as a lieutenant in the 369th. Together with a fellow musician, Noble Sisley, with whom he made music in Harlem before the war, the former conductor set out to form the Harlem Hellfighters Regimental Jazz Band. The idea was to raise morale and promote patriotism. Before Louis Armstrong and Duke Ellington, jazz was already deeply entrenched in African-American traditions, including work songs, spirituals, and the blues. While ragtime, with its syncopated rhythms and lively melodies, laid the foundation for jazz, it would reach near perfection in the early 20th century New Orleans. The city's diverse cultural influences, including African, European, and Caribbean, contributed to the development of a unique musical environment. Jazz was shaped throughout the city's brass band, Dance, parades, and the second-line traditions to become a phenomenon among the African-American communities in and outside of the southern city. Under James Reese Europe's direction, the Hellfighters Jazz Band began playing New Orleans music in military camps and hospitals, both American and French. Soon, the music began spilling into opera houses and town centers, and Europe's band was being asked to perform outside of their military duties. At first, the phenomenon was local, but that would soon change because of someone least expected. One day, the regimental commander was ordered to showcase his band for local visiting military dignitaries to the camp. Among the visitors was a Southern newspaper reporter, Erwin S. Cobb of the Saturday Evening Post, who made a living by belittling African Americans in his stories. The man sat smug-faced as the Harlem Hellfighter jazz band opened up with the stars and stripes and followed it by a medley of plantation melodies. And then Cobb sat up in his chair, enamored. And when the band got to way down upon the Sony River, he would go on to write of the event. 
I wanted to cry, and when the drum major, who likewise had a splendid baritone voice, sang Joan of Arc, first in English and then in excellent French, the locals openly cried, and an elderly peasant, heavily whiskered with the tears of joyous and thankful enthusiasm running down his bearded cheeks, was with difficulty restrained from throwing his arms about the soloist and kissing him. I think surely this must be the best regimental band in our army. Certainly, it is the best one I have ever heard in Europe during this war. The band continued playing, in some cases, to crowds of 50,000 people in both French and English, ushering in the soundtrack of the Great War. Europe and its Hellfighters band returned to the United States following an armistice on February 12, 1919, by playing during the historic victory parade along the Fifth Avenue in New York City that ended, ironically, or perhaps not, in Harlem. A local paper reported the following week, the Negro troops practically owned the city. In no time, Europe and his band were invited to recording studios and the tour followed soon thereafter. Black Americans supported them because of racial pride and white Americans supported them because they wanted to hear the music that the French went so wild about. The Harlem Hellfighter Band would receive a standing ovation anywhere they performed, and jazz would soon dominate the national music scene of the 1920s and the 1930s with exhilarating performances by the likes of Louis Armstrong. But to James Reese Europe and the Hellfighters, it was more important that they successfully accomplish what they set out to do, which was to make a positive change in American society and prove that their race was capable of commanding respect. Sadly, Europe would not live to see their mission's progress. On May 9, 1919, shortly after his return from the war, he was involved in an altercation with a band member during an intermission to one of their performances. The drummer fatally stabbed Europe in the neck with a small knife. A dream deferred. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to check out History Shorts on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to your shows. You can also visit HistoryShortsPodcast.com.